Hi everybody, thanks for tuning in. My name is Mama Tokus. Welcome to the second in a series of five Apples and Snakes at Home shows. We have got some superb spoken word for you tonight. It's unbelievable. We've got two top performance poets streaming live to your minds. We're full West Country. We've got Disraeli from Bristol. We've got Safia from Wiltshire. Oh, and I'm in Devon. And the reason we've got like a bit of West Country focus is because, sad face, this is the final Forked session. And Forked was a session that ran in Plymouth, was run for 11 years, thanks to Apples and Snakes supporting that. So, and that's where I hosted, that's where loads of people in Plymouth got to see spoken word of super quality right in their hometown. We were supposed to be in real life, but instead... We're going to stream thanks to Apples and Snakes. Don't forget, you can interact too. So I know, like, in, in real life, you can, like, clap and shout and go woo, but, like, you can sort of do the same in a chat box alongside the YouTube stream tonight. And we really need to hear your questions and your comments, and I'll be sharing them with the poets that are going to perform to you tonight. Um, so get busy. Get busy with the emojis. Get busy with the clapping emoji whatever so you know we'd love to hear your stories and your comments and your questions sit tight our first performer tonight became the first ever poet to do the triple yeah that's right she won hammer and tongues uk national slam championship she won the edinburgh fringe slam championship up at the edinburgh festival and she won the BBC, well, she was one of six people that, that were, won the BBC Words first finalist as well. Her work focuses on a Caribbean heritage. It braids rhythm. It braids dance. Maybe she'll do some movement for you tonight. It braids technology and science all together in one incredible package. She is some busy lady. She speaks truths about what it means to be a black woman in a world that her words, treats black women like another species. People of YouTube, this is Safia Kamaria Kinshasa. Hello, hi. This is a very strange experience. <laughs> this is a really strange experience. I, I miss I miss live performances um, with people and feeling uh, the energy in the room. So uh, yes, this is this is a new one. Um, I think that I'm going to uh, begin um, with a poem called "Sand," and I would like to dedicate it to the people of this country who have ever been told to go back home um, and only now are people realizing how important um, immigrants and people who uh, work in certain positions are. So it's get dedicated to my, um, my, my family, uh, my grandparents, uh, my, I have an auntie in New York who was a former nurse. Um, and yeah, it's a very, it's a difficult time right now. Um, but yeah, this is nothing but love um, to, to you. That's what beach with my granddaddy actually. I am asking why it's so hard to clean the sand from our hair. Instead, he educates me on the history of our beaches. Gifts me with a shell shaped like a glow, tells me it's mine and always has been. His charisma could tickle the ocean swell, break any crest attempting to dump in organic debris. If he wanted to, he could spin the globe on the wrong axis, tear the horizon apart. But he learned to settle his fury like the finely ground eulogies residing at the corners of his passport, scrutinized by immigration on his return from serving England. They dared to ask him, where are you from? Where are you really from? Where are you really, really from? Mama! 
Mama. Toils her way through offices where her face is stapled to the bottom of boards so no one mistakes her status. They wanted to smooth over her ridges and volcanoes, declare her name as mythical as Atlantis, drown her beaches, name them floors, not wonders of the earth nor national parks. My mama is every hemisphere. Her brain dense layers of thick IQ vegetation. They wanted to plow it down, tame her molten to igneous rocks so not a damn thing would grow back. But there was sand beneath her cryosphere, evolving to the minerals we are slain for. To justify this, they asked, where are you from? Where are you really from? Where are you really, really from? I'm from adults discussing the politics of Star Trek, black power signs and turtlenecks, ganja smoke and the sounds of Stevie Wonder, soca calypso, Saturday school and Kwanzaa, aloe vera growing in wooden shea soaked beads, fish fingers, oven chips and baked beans, CD players that love to malfunction, a council flat in South East London. But when you ask me where I'm from, you're asking about that, you're asking about London, right, snap back, ring chat. When you ask me that question, when we go back, to go back, to go back, to go back. That's what beach where I dream, my granddaddy. Where we're stingy and sand balls form, beaming brighter than burning star. My sand is our whack, killing our gold. I know I can outside it bow you off. That is why it's so hard to clean the sand from my hair. Them clinging to the tight coils that remind them of the chains, the length that ah, you may not recognize my face. But it is a face of limestone that built the house slaves, built the house this planet lives on. It carries indigo, ginger, cotton, tobacco, sugar, though I don't feel too sweet. Whenever you ask, whenever you dare to ask, my son is an elephant's tusk that bites a wave of invisible borders. The reason why you don't see England in my dreams, rainforests, and tectonic sheets is because, as my granddaddy said, the whole globe belongs to me, son. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you can only hear one, but I'm sure everyone back there. <laughs> so I'm trying, I'm trying. Yeah. On the comments, people are like loving it. Yeah. So like <laughs> it is a funny experience, isn't it, for the performers? But I know from watching last week that actually it was like it was really wicked. So um okay. trust that. Trust that. Good. Um, that's rang so many bells with me as a kind of, um, you know, half black people, people have asked me that I've got to say, I don't want to bring myself into it too much, but, but, you know, depending on what I feel like, I, I might say, wait, you know, they go, where are you from? No, where are you really from? And I go, Essex. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and they're really disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, got a little comment here. Harula Lad says, so good to see you. Hi, Harula. Lovely to uh, to know you are there. I cannot see you at this moment. <laughs> this is such a strange experience. I know. In um, fact, I've just realised I know Harula as well. So, hi, Harula. Hi. Great. Thanks. Keep your comments. Keep your questions. When did you write that? Um. Okay. So I wrote that last year. That was actually. Um. I started writing that at a words first workshop. Um, okay. So uh, with Diana London and Manua Pilgrim, and they were, yeah, they were fantastic uh, facilitators. And I also, uh, to get the rhythm, I actually had someone um, record the sounds of the beach at the beginning <laughs> of the Batstock Beach. So they recorded the sounds of the ocean, and that was what mm. I listened to to get that, that rhythm. Um, oh. so that's a cool fact. There we go. Great, great cool fact. What you got next for us? Okay, uh, so next is a fairly um, new piece uh, that was, I promised a, a, a good friend and an amazing um, poet that I would read this one actually. So this is called, um, I'll talk a bit more about it afterwards, but it is called The Headless Chicken. Um, yes, that's all I'll say for now. Okay, The Headless Chicken. Glorious mess, an eruption of high-pitched belly juice sloshing the yard. Freedom, webbed feet palancing on baked dust, nostalgic for more wrinkled souls, to amass gravel, eternal rebellion, drumsticks budding lowly emanations, 
dribble and slang of the few who accomplish self-gratification in hard times. Wow, wild, bulging, bloodshot eyes and a tightened beak, horse and infestation of ants. I saw her neck skin wrapped round the dumpling, a foot in my uncle's ball. His grin informed me how heavenly the slipperiness of her vernacular tasted. Her peripatetic blubber satisfied our demands for lawlessness. Each chunk of temerarious fat a sacrifice I was discouraged from exercising. Enchanting, the epilogue she gave, shedding a pitiful impersonation of a domestic beneath a banana fig tree. Freedom, puffed breasts, snatching the sun's rears. The wired fence slices it. Sun, now severed. Balances on a tail crimped in fluff, quivering, jostling in ambivalence, ransacking the realm we chased, expanding wings preparing to gently knock wind chimes and argue with a hurricane. To this day, I cannot eat chicken feet, bearing witness to her ungainly parade of frenetic feathers, coerce me to covet the notion of pandemonium in my skeleton. To stand in a river of caterpillars hibernating hebitu dinnies. To find temporary residence in Michael Jackson's left sock so I know what it's like to dissolve into backwardsness with people still praising you. To live as she did. Even without a head, she refused to die silently. Even without a head, she refused to die. <laughs> more clapping more clapping emoji <laughs> so um I, what i should have said at the start is that you're known as bird speed as well so lots yeah. of people will know you as that i was using your full gorgeous name thank you there um and when i was finding out a little bit more about you um i found out that you, movement is a part of your work as well yes yeah. And, and how does that, uh, Disraeli's putting me off by dancing in the corner uh, when I said that, but, you know. Um, <laughs> how, do, how on earth do you do that? Do you speak and move? or? Yeah, it's kind of like, it's, yeah, so I, I basically, um, while I'm uh, performing poetry, I'll do lots of body movements and, um yeah, and I'm and right now I'm actually trying to use choreography, so dance notation to create the poetry. So I'm I'm actually writing choreography like in the form of poetry and and transferring that to the words um, on the page. So it's very exciting. Um, but yes, lots of um, of movement while I'm on stage, and sometimes. Um, so now, right now, I'm experimenting with a lot of music. So having um, music uh while i perform um and uh i guess maybe you know like okay so basically like how beyonce does a breakdown so sometimes in the middle of the poem i'll be like i'm gonna dance now and then i'll start doing like a, i'll start you know obviously better than that because yeah yeah but yes yeah, so i'll start um dancing and then go back to the poem and it i um yeah it takes um a lot of uh stamina um yeah. it's it's even just standing on stage and, and being so physical because I know how I'm being physical um because I'm known for being quite physical it's yeah it's very exhausting so yes um it it takes a lot of stamina and, and breath control and yeah it, it's not as easy as as I apparently make it look um but I'm trying to make it look easier are you gonna are you gonna demonstrate <clears throat> in um, one of your pieces tonight or is it just purely for the stage it's pure I, it's purely for the stage i i have a, a reputation to protect i <laughs> i need to make sure I, no um i'm i am i actually uh i have a slight ankle injury um in all honesty uh we I can't see your ankles we i know see i know what, but what about what about any any can you convert it for live streaming purposes uh I um it's a challenge. It, it is a challenge. I think only arm movements would be seen. Um, but I think 
Well, I mean, my last piece tonight is going to be um, is a is a very very new poem. So I I don't I haven't learned it well enough. But here's the thing: when all of this is over, you can all come and see me do all of my magic tricks on stage. How about that? <laughs> it's a deal. <laughs> there we go. You can all come and see me um in my in my in full wonder uh on stage doing everything but yes but you know but now just the words i guess don't go to your poem just yet because um we've got some another question from the comments Amazing. and someone has asked i don't know who's asked that but do the words and how you're going to perform them do they all come to you as one when you're writing or do the words come first and then you work out how to give them voice or expression. Harula's asked awesome. that. Okay. Um, so now, um, you should. So now I'm working with performing first and the choreography first. But all of my, but most of my work is actually um, words um, first and just writing the poetry and figuring out what that poem needs. And also, it's for me, it's important to remember that on different days the poem will require something different depending on your mood and how you're feeling so I may just not want so every time um anytime anyone performs they always perform something different they always perform differently no one can give the same performance but I move how I feel um and and just figure out before I go on stage what I can give and what the poem needs and try and find that sense of equilibrium um and that's just practice I guess if that makes sense and how, how did you come across that kind of style I mean did it were you like really clear that you wanted to move and speak or did did it was it an accident that you did it um honest, I can't actually stay still and <laughs> while I'm like I'm just while I'm on stage <laughs> I'm just I just, you know, and sometimes there's a, like there's a lot of rhythm in my poetry as well. Sure. So I I just feel the need to to move, and it I I don't really like just standing, and and I yeah I just feel the need to I just felt the need to move, and and I saw um I mean coming from so in in Barbados I used to see so the Calypsonians and would you know with when they would um, infuse spoken words and um. Uh, I've forgotten the term. Why have I forgotten the term? When they fuse um, spoken word and social commentary um, with their work, um, and I saw all of this movement and and this this vibrant life around them, and I guess um, that always stuck with me. So I thought, okay, well, why not bring that um, to to my performances? And and it just it it, it just worked. Um, yeah. yeah. I've got another question for you, and it's a, it's a really West Country question because it's James. He's really looking forward to seeing you when things get back to normal. He's hoping. Yeah. Will you be performing in Devon? Will I be performing? That's a good question. Um, Isn't it? I'm sure. I'm sure I will be performing in Devon. I I do enjoy performing um in the southwest. So as soon as as I can and, and things get back to normal, then yes, I will I will come back, um, head back down to, to Devon. So Okay, so I've got a question for James. Is like will you bring, you know, 150 people to see Birdsby? <laughs> I think he said yes. Okay. Okay. It's, <laughs> it's official. It's gone out on YouTube. It must be true. So can I invite you to do, uh, perform your third piece for us? Yes. Okay. So this third piece is um, dedicated to my, um, to, well, to a few good friends who are in New York at the moment. Um, and it, yeah, they're really going through it. So I wanted to um, write something in honor of them. And, um, and I guess it, it, it will um, expose, I guess, a lot of what, what most of us um, might be feeling. Um, and feel free to ask me about, like, so this is for anyone watching about my process and, and et cetera, et cetera, as well, because I think that's actually going to come up in the, in the, in the, um, in the poem. Um, so, yeah. 
Okay. This poem is called Plastered Heart and August. On a walk through an asphyxiated city, your head is a rumpled newspaper that needs to be transported with more care. A basket on a yellow tricycle, perhaps. You would ride around your neighborhood, returning only when jump rope was finishing its last few laps. Now free time looks like loose pocket change in the same gutters you're trying to keep your newspaper out of. You scour the streets for good news, but the gospel is in braille. And though you are used to sirens, these sirens lacerate the drums that yearn for, hey, it's so good to see you again. Should we go for a frappuccino? You hate frappuccinos, though right now you would do anything for an invite to grab an over-expensive drink and gossip about how your area has been remodeled into a new ambience of ugly. Whimpering is the new scrolling, checking statistics, the new form of status updates, and this ghost land has manufactured a burial ground in the air. Damn this place, ugly. You say as you cry through your feet, trudging towards an unfair war against an enemy you will never meet. Spring may have arrived, but your lifelines are cracked and brittle as autumn leaves smelling of dirty bootleg moonshine. The buried secrets in your bookshelf drag themselves into your mirrors. Now everything in your apartment is contaminated with you and you are still learning who and what you are. You turn the corner and catch a glimpse of red, red like a tempestuous tomato that bursts its acerbity in a way you wish you could. The red takes shape held up by a thin black curvy line, red heart shaped balloon patched in plasters. You blink, you blink again, your eyes acoustic guitar plucks bewilderment and wonder. How is it still floating against a brick wall, you say? How has this balloon held itself together? You study it some more, you watch it float, as though faith could be graffitied, as though faith could live near gang signs and RIP messages, as though faith could exist between bricks and have the nerve to rise. You wonder if you could do that, if you could still exist in a place where bricks means a dirty dead end if you with holes attached to a thin string could levitate. You call it what you will be and the month where time could be measured in cartoons and and how long it took for ice lollies to melt, how frequent the laughter in the basketball court, how heavy the bass from someone's duct tape car, and how creased your clothes, how frustrated your belly, the and the jump rope finishing its last few laps. You name your plastered heart August and retreat back to your dwelling, knowing what you're made of. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, man. I hope you're enjoying this out there. I am <laughs> loving it. This is such a massive treat for me. I'm watching. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking, but I'm watching. Um, did you like that, everyone? I've just murked everyone. What does that mean? Oh, someone's just left a comment. Murking. Is that rude? Ooh. Oh, we're below the watershed. Don't go yet, Safia, because I just wanted to ask you, um, what's your next project? And what are you working on right now? Um, okay, right now I am taking a break. <laughs> I'm taking a break. Are you um, furloughed from poetry writing? Yeah, um, right now. So right now I am, uh, yes, um, I think that I'm just dealing with with what's going on. Yeah. And I think, um, so I remember like there were, there's always, there's been a, quite a few questions about um, process, creative process, and, and how do we stay creative during these times? And I think um, that one thing I know for certain, even though I know nothing, but one thing I, I do know for certain is that taking moments to feel, to grieve, to allow those emotions to seep in is healthy and mm. needs to be done. This whole um, productivity uh, 
um, concept, this, this need for productivity all the time is going to kill us um, before Corona does. And it's, it's not, you know, we just, I think, yes, we have a lot more time, but we don't need to spend that time doing anything. And this is everything. And this is me saying this, you know, and I'm the person who's always like, trying to, but I'm saying to people like, no, um, stop. It's okay to, to take a minute. Um, you know, this, this whole, you know, I mean, this whole thing about, okay. Um, yeah. Like, I, you know, there's all these statuses that are annoying people on, on social media where it's like, okay, like when you need to do 12 startups and learn five languages and build a perfect body and, and do this and do that and he, eat healthily and learn how to cook and learn how to do this. It's that's not actually healthy and it's and it's not what we should actually be doing. I have do I have time to go into the side? <laughs> Richard Tesh Tedeschi and uh, Lawrence Cole 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 Cologne, Cologne, Lawrence Cologne and Richard Tedeschi, they came up with this, this concept called um, not post the opposite. Of, okay, post-traumatic growth, mm -hmm. right? So rather than post-traumatic stress disorder, we have another thing now called post-traumatic growth. And rather than doing this, this, this surge, having this surge of, of energy and constant, let's go, let's go, let's go. It's about feeling allowing what has happened to seep in and then having this this growth of this creative growth um just exploring what's actually going on and you and by doing this you become more resilient um mm -hmm. you are able to become more creative um you're increasing your sense of altruism um, and I actually, when I was reading about it, I actually called it the superhero complex. Um, this idea that when a superhero, something bad happens to a superhero, because it always, okay, everything that we need to learn, know about creativity can be learned from Marvel. Okay. We all see the superhero. This is the easiest way to think about it. Every time a superhero gains his powers, something bad has happened to him. But it's not because he then decided to start doing 70 press-ups a day. It's because they took a moment to feel what was going on and then that's when they gain their powers so think of it like that that's that's the easiest way to describe it okay i Just, love that description there we go <laughs> can, you do, can you do a ted talk with you <laughs> i want more of this and the thing yeah. is so do people in the comments but we've got a but show to do I, but like wow where can we see you again yeah online I, somewhere i mean it's people kind of uh have been asking how do I keep going and how is it that I'm able to keep whatever and it's honestly from when you you know blocking putting up a wall to your emotions is the worst thing you can do that's how I'm able to continue again I just I allow it to happen okay like all these you know this whole thing that you know there's no need to be sad there's no need to whatever it's not that bad yes it is that's that's silly you know so yes allow yourself to feel take time out if you need to and do what you want you know you know what you need um so yeah that's that's right now in the time that we have that's the best advice i can give yeah oh wow look at that you're so busy you're a dancer you're a poet <laughs> and you're an agony aunt and you're a ted talk scientist super expert I'm so chuffed to have like shared a bill with you, Sophia. <laughs> yes, uh, bird speed. Thank you so much. I'm sure we're going to see loads more of you. And your links are going to be, Sophia's links are going to be below the YouTube stream. So if you want to like keep in touch with her, find out more about her, click the thingy below. So, you know, I know you're chatting and you're commenting, but like scroll down, you can see all the handy links for the poets that are here. So I wanted to talk a little bit about apples and snakes and um, kind of what they did in Plymouth, which I think is what they did, what they've done everywhere else. So apples and snakes, 11 years ago, came into a bar that I was running and um, said, oh, you know, I'd like to, we'd like to put on a performance poetry show, you know, with spoken word poets. I'm like, what's that? What's spoken word? 
They say it's the new rock and roll, they said. I said, great. I'm shortening this, all right? Otherwise, I'd go on for ages. 11 years ago, a night called Forked started up in a bee bar in Plymouth. And I know that there's some people watching that uh, have come to that show. And uh, the show just changed my name as the host. Oh, well, I don't really like poetry, but I like this. And I know that that experience has been replayed in all the different areas where Apples and Snakes have supported poetry, spoken word, poets and venues and the infrastructure to um, make this sort of creativity happen. And the thing is, what's really weird is like right now, while we're all struggling, while we're all locked down, you know, virtual poetry, if you like, entertainment it's gone right up music we need that in our lives we need words that poetry deals with the big issues of life and that's why these kind of people are important and that's why apples and snakes are important um i'm going to do a little bit of a soft sell there is a donate link down below the stream and uh, you know apples and snakes are still supporting loads and loads of poets and their communities and that's one of the ways that they can do that they're being credible um, to the performers who have lost like live gigs in real life. So if you can see a way to like a donation, that would be great. I would really appreciate that. That would be lovely. Now, Forked was important for me because um, I readily admit I wasn't a spoken word artist um, until I began hosting Forked. And like I said just now, it, I was so lucky. Yeah, I had a gig. But like, I got to watch the kind of people that turned up on the stage, like right in front of me, Kate Tempest, Zena Edwards, Rob Orton, um, Eva Mannix, I think Polar Bear Kane, Jemima Foxtrot, Rachel Pantechnica, Megan Beach. I don't know, Disraeli, I don't know if he came. I think he might have. I can't remember. Yeah, he's nodding. He did too. So these are massive, massive names. So we were just so lucky, and I know that like other nights all around the country, thanks to Apples and Snake support, are just as lucky as well. So without further ado, I'd like to bring on our next performer. Um, but before I do that, I'll find my intro to him. Ooh. He's known to loads and loads of people. You not watching out there, people not watching. He's known everywhere. I'm going to assume that there's new people watching, as I described, this rapper, this poet, this musician. He's done all the big shows. He's done Glastonbury. He's done the Royal Festival Hall. He's even done the Eden Project down in Kernel. So that makes him a superstar. 20 years of performing and creating. During that time, he's won prizes. He's toured nationally and internationally with his band, The Small Gods, and Solo. He's written hip-hop plays. These people have been... I don't know what... Safiya's on about like, just try and chill out. You two are like the busiest people working in poetry today. This next poet's rooted strongly in hip hop, but he's also inspired by old folk music, sea shanties, and songs of the people. Please welcome this poet, this singer, this multi instrumentalist, producer, and MC. This is Disraeli. Hello. Man, Safiya just blew my tiny mind to pieces she always does um yeah it's funny I, i'm i'm in the the spare room in my flat and uh and so i've got all my writing notebooks everywhere all around me and it, it's always a, a good sign of a of an amazing performer if they go on before you and it has you sort of scrabbling through your books to to find something new and better than what you've already got to do. So I've got I've got books open all around me trying to find new things that I can share. Um, so I'm definitely going to share some new things. Um, There's a madness to the world today. A billion fragments in the tidal wave. The wave crashes up the old green bay. And everybody's eyes are far me. Must hurry, there's a frantic rush up in the cafes and the cancer bus. In seven minutes, we turn back to dust. 
And everybody's eyes are burn me. Eyes are burn me and our backs are sprained. Muscles spasming in nasty ways. Faces glisten like they're cast in clay. Oh, look at everybody's eyes. Ooh. It's madness. Ooh. Yeah. None of these signifiers answers us. Professor Sanike and Captain Crush, Lady Ladbrooks and the Abacars. Everybody's eyes are funny. And it's a crash, it's an emergency. Paints a long and livid purple scream all up the turnpike to Bounders Green. Everybody's eyes are sick. A machine collapses in the hospital. A stack of polystyrene boxes falls, and out the panic room a monster crawls. Everybody's eyes are by me, so stop your scribbling and stay your pen. They're putting needles in the rain again. A planet governed by insane young men. Everybody's eyes are by me. It's madness. What do we do now? But, um, well, we all stand back and go, whoa! <laughs> but, woo! Are we, talk- there- are we talking now? Is that what happened? I, th- I think so. Okay. I think so. You surprised us all with that. That was amazing. Thanks. Thank you so much. <laughs> Is that new? Uh, that's part of... That's um, off the Unmaster album, which is the most recent album, yeah. So it came out in September. When you said scrabbling for notepads, that's is that how the Unmaster started or the theatre show that goes with that? Just just so people know, um, Disraeli's put out a new solo album last year, late last year? September, yeah. And it goes with a theatre show as well, right? Maybe you could tell everyone about it, please, and then... That's right. Well, um, in answer to your first question, as as a, I'm I am in my flat. I'm I'm gonna <laughs> take advantage of the fact to do some real time responding. Um, so the 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 books of um, th- th- these are where things start, I guess, um, which are my morning pages. So I I, I do ah. a lot of writing in the uh, free association writing in the morning. And um, I tend to go outside my house to do that. And uh, a lot of the Unmaster um, sort of took root in a period where um, it felt like the world was going mental. And I also felt like I was going mental at that time too. Um, I was having quite a lot of turmoil in my own uh, internal universe. Um, and a combination of those two things and the process of, of doing a lot of free association writing um, gave birth to the lyrics of The Unmaster and the music for The Unmaster as well. Um, so I, I produced the music too. Um, and uh, and so, yes, yeah, so it's super different from things I've written before in that it's, it's kind of less crafted in a sense. It's, it comes from a time where I was doing a, like generating tons and tons of um, just mental splurge. Um, but I'd say it's less kind of edited and crafted than anything I've done before. And and therefore, I think it feels closer to, uh, closer to the truth, I guess. What was the Can, uh, Well, I, I, I don't know. I can't remember. But really, I'm going to ask you another one. It was about, what, you know, what is the Unmaster about? What's the, t- the title? What's the feeling? For people that don't know. Um, the title, The Unmaster, is uh, it, it comes from... A lot of investigation um, into my masculinity, I guess. Um, Not I guess, I don't know why I say I guess. It's a kind of uh, a validating seeking phrase. Um, Yeah, it comes from a lot of investigation into my masculinity and realising that one of the things that was stopping me from becoming well in uh, in my internal universe, again, was my learnings about how to be a man. And... um, So a lot of that hangs on the idea of um, dominion and domination 
Um, the idea that I, I need to be king of every situation that I'm in. Um, and if I'm not, then I'm like a humiliated failure. Um, it means that if you're, I found personally, when I was confronted with my own um, difficulties, my own internal kind of difficulties, my own failures, um, if I wasn't already able to cope, then I felt like it was an extra layer of failure. Um, and it was just a flipping recipe for disaster um, in terms of learning anything, moving on beyond the mental kind of turmoil and stuff. So the unmaster is the unking, I guess, like <laughs> learning to step down from the position of king, um, step out, out of my need to dominate and become a student again, to learn again. Um, and yeah, re realise that I, I'm, I don't have the answers and I never will. And that's delicious. Have you got another piece for us? I do have an, another piece for you. In fact, I, I am going to share a brand new one because I, I'm really want, at the moment, I feel a really strong sense of really wanting to like offer people something in this situation. Do you know what I mean? So there's a sense of like, this is not just about me and my social media posts. This is about everyone having a flipping struggle. Um, and so, th th so th this is something I've written, uh, I wrote the other day for, um, for a commission for LSE. Um, and to explain in it a little bit, Warlock is um, a guy that I met, um, a guy who lives in the same area as me, and he um, is a homeless person um, who sleeps under the railway bridge, um, who believes very strongly in witchcraft. Warlock sees it from under his hair, from his filthy cloud of duvets by the overground with his nose ring in, he sees it everywhere. Beasties in the stupid dawn, 5 a.m., green lanes coughing and heaving. Deborah at the bus stop with her great burden. Marcus right behind her, 50 miles away. Angelo biting at his finger skin, back at the magistrates again, his leg again shaking. And Anna with her five tribes screaming bloody murder down corridors 50 miles away. Everybody 50 miles away and pressed one on the other. Lizard bodies and their faces drawn. All except Alan, who is pumped and glowing, arriving at his office like a boar in rut, advertising houses at a fabulous cost that has the lizard scrabbling in dry mouth panic. Warlock sees it. He sees it everywhere. It drops its cigarette ends where he lays his head. It yanks its toddlers by the arm and tells him to mind his fucking business. So he hunches over a can for a very long time. I pass him at 11 and again at one. The second time my heart lurches and tells me he is dead. I say his name, Ben. I know it from the time in the passage by the wall when I saw him crying. Ben, Ben. And his head lifts very slow and he sees me through a bad sea of slime. Slime on his amulets, Slime over his mouth and nose. I swallow. I don't know what to say. All right, mate, I say. What are you up to now? I'm looking for a good witch, he says. He says, there's trouble coming. Thank you. Wow. When did you write that? Uh, I, I wrote it last week. Yeah. Fresh, fresh for the people watching. Apples and snakes at home. Fresh off the press. Yeah. What else you got? Ah, shall I just do a thing that I've got? Do a thing. Go. I feel like I'm doing. I'm, I'm into doing new things right now, so I'm going to do another new thing. That feels like the right decision. Um. All right. This is, uh, well, it's, it's newish. I actually wrote it a little while ago, but I've just sort of resuscitated it and I'm trying to make a track out of it in a moment. So it's, um, it's uh, current. And uh, I wrote it when I was sat on a train going through Shropshire with this woman exuding hostility opposite me. And I was, 
I'm, I'm quite a, a strange customer to travel with because I do a lot of jiggling around and writing and kind of talking to myself and singing little snatches and stuff. Um, and uh, she was opposite me, just kind of hissing at me under her breath. Um, and so I wrote, a, I wrote this for her, for her to hiss at. And it seems, she, it's, she, to me, she's the essence of the worst of what we are in this country. It was probably not fair to her. She's probably lovely. Crocodile lady, crocodile deck shoes, gloves are a deep dark navy, purple blue. Crocodile lady, crocodile teeth says, breathe a banana rack, or should I say, wind cheetah you, straight from Egypt, by a crew of crocodile lady. Crocodile blood perfume, I clock you, encanting like a high priestess of a bottle blonde set, skin mottled paper, shirt cotton trader, and those crocodile loafers you've got, all Shropshire in a cold swoon, hypnosis, is this your mist? Are these your skeleton trees? Is this your string of hills? Marching off in a craggy huff? Are these your children? Is this your fields? Ah, ah, crocodile woman. Brain like a raised weapon. Face like a zipped jacket. And those darting crocodile eyes tell me your mind that this in the Nile. And none of us are going to speak. We're never going to speak. These are the lands of the iron reptile. Eternal midweek. Infernal cold, internal shivering, and each droplet and sheep and hedges encircled in her discipline. Crocodile lady, crocodile lady, crocodile deck shoes, gloves are a deep dark navy, purple blue. Crocodile lady. Well, I've never heard the words breathable anorak and thought that they could be funky. <laughs> That's a definite first. Thank you. Amazing. I've got a couple of questions from uh, people that are typing in the chat. And Ian has been very patient. Thanks, Ian. Ian wants to know about the morning pages. He says, do you write them for a specific amount of time, for a set amount of time? Um, I don't write them for a set amount of time. I write them for a set amount of space. So I, I, do, um, I do at least a side. Uh, at least an A4 side. I always use but these tiger, tiger stationary. <laughs> um, so I do at least an A4 side. And sometimes it's the last thing I want to do and I hate it. Um, but I force myself to the bottom of the page. I'm quite, um, I'm quite sort of soldierly about my creative process. I tend to push, push on through and turn up and do um, even when I hate it. And I think sometimes that can be really counterproductive. Um, and like I, I force myself to do things I don't enjoy creatively. But sometimes it, it does. Um, it, it definitely generates a lot of words. I'll give yeah. it that. Does that mean you've done the artist's way? It does because mean you've done yeah. the artist's way. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, they say to, she says turn up, as does turn Elizabeth up. Gilbert. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just turn up. Full of Californian cliches. Hey! <laughs> hey, we should talk, you know. Hey, I know. I'm, I'm feeling a lot of love in this room. <laughs> well, there is a lot of love, actually, because loads of people have like been loving what you're doing. Um, Kat, on the comment, loves The Unmaster, says it's a beautiful and a raw album, but she loves it loads. And she's she wants to ask you a question. Kat says, do you make music and write poetry or do you carve out time and space to focus on both separately? Or do they come together? Um, I try to do both every day. Um, I try to do, I, I write every day and I try to do um, about an hour of music making every day as well. Um, yeah, it's, it can be, sometimes it can be a bit counterproductive being, um, trying to be a musician at the same time as trying to be a writer. And I, I definitely often think to myself like, I wish I could just dedicate like a year to just writing or a year to just making music. Um, and I feel like I would progress so much more and so much faster if I did. But I think I, I just uh, I just resign myself to the fact that I'm just going to be a bit of a jack of all trades. Um, and uh, yeah, so yeah, writing every day. I try and make that one of the first things I do writing. So I find that the kind of the mind when it's in, in its liminal 
um, between dream and waking state is is when it's at its most fruity and and surprising. Um, so I try and do that writing then, and then yeah, before the admin hits, before the emails and the social media bullshit, I tend to um, try and get an hour of music making in as well. That's good to hear, actually. I know that that feeling of like, um, yeah, there's the fruity and what what did you say? Fruity and surprising. Fruity and surprising side of the brain, and then the admin side of the brain. And I know that um, I struggle when I, I've done loads of admin. I can't kind of get back to the fruity and surprising stuff. But um, yes. yeah, got to do that first. Yeah, yeah. Prioritize that. So um, can we keep chatting a little bit and then uh, go to a final bit from you, perhaps, but um, or final couple of bits? But I wanted to know a little bit more about your live stream tomorrow. Yeah, let's look You're about busy, that. yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I had yeah, I, I I really freaked out when the whole um, when the whole thing hit and all my gigs got cancelled or postponed all of a sudden. Um, so uh, I got on the case of trying to learn how to live stream, and tomorrow night we have our second uh, live stream, and I'm calling it the Mad Love Stream. Because mad love is a phrase that I like. Um, because love is 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 kind of intrinsically insane and irrational. Um, so so the love is always mad, and also it means copious amounts of it. Um, and there is there is copious amounts of love at the moment. I feel it very profoundly. It's popping out of my neighbourhood, which before was a buttoned up little London street. Um, is now uh, everyone is in solidarity, leaving boxes of food at each other's doors, um, helping the people who have less, um, you know, redistributing from the, from the people that have more. So I feel this is a time of mad love that we're in at the moment. And the mad love stream is my live stream. It's 8.15 tomorrow night on the Disraeli Facebook page. Um, and it's going to last for about an hour and a half. And people who are um, patrons on my Patreon site um we will get together afterwards and have a zoom after party um which is a lot of fun the, the last time there were like mirror balls and dancing and people sharing poetry and so um yeah so the, get onto the disraeli patreon um site and, and and come along to the zoom after party as well if you can I love the sound of the after party. Yeah. Um, you can see all those links to Disraeli stuff and the live stream in the uh, words below the stream. Um, so look, take it away, Disraeli, for your final piece or pieces. What you got? God, I don't actually know. No, you should have been a bit more prepared, mate. I should have been a bit more prepared, really. Hold up. I've got a list of um, things on the wall up there. Okay. I'll do, um, I'll, can, I, can I do one and then another one? Yes, you can. That would be great. Okay. They, seem, they sort of work as a pair. I don't know why they work as a pair. Um, I've got a reason to live. She's called Donna Diaz. She's got to roll in stride And she waddles when she runs Well, that's all right I met her in a house of thorns She told me she'd never be mine Why was her slave for a day? And then she fell into my arms, and that's all right. She took me to a house by the sea. She showed me her strange insides. Why well, she's nasty, and she's brave, and she's free. She grinds her teeth all night, but that's all right. Oh my Maria, tie me up, my blue flame, tie me up, my motor seal, tie me up, you holy war. When you wet me, I will take your name. 
wave it like a neon sword. I've got a reason to live. She's called Donna Diane. She's got a rolling stride. And she waddles when she runs. Well, that's all right. Um, and I'll do this last one as well. This last one's called The Little Things. Um, and it's from, uh, it's an old track from a, a Small Gods album. Um, but it seems to particularly resonate right now for me. My Nana told me it's the little things. She held his hand the second that he slipped away. And something in him shifted like a lifted weight. The little things. The imprint is back left in the mattress, even when she brought him back as an urn of ashes for the mantelpiece to hold beneath the picture with the whole family in gold leaf frame before they scattered. She let her husband go close to Logan's rock, waved her sweetheart away and waited for her own to stop. Beating the bottom of the urn till the last burnt bone cinder fell, she'll tell if you ask her the little things. She can spin them into epic webs. The waves break stones without diminishing her tenderness. But her address books filling up with dead friends, her chest filling with the things she never said to them, the little things. So now the old girl's blatant. You would be too if you would watch the whole world fade. Do with the truth what you will, she'll hold hers blazing. Cancer took her left breast, grandpa took her patience. But no bugger took her pride, clear mind, though she turns a hundred in five years' time. A century's a whole lot of repetition to live through, a lot of channels of television to flick through, and her limbs function less efficient than they did do. Still, it's the little things that stick with you. She told me it's the little things, the things you never said enough, the things I never said enough. You're a legend, bruv. Keep your dander up, you anchor me. There's no granite tough as love for family. And even if a cancer comes for one of us, the other one will carry on the legacy. We're our daddy's sons. And that's a heavy flag to wave, but look, geez, you're doing it. However many Saturdays you took ease and chewed your lip. Your love's far bigger than the drugs are. Sit and prop up the bar with me. We've been living too quickly. That's part of the mission, isn't it? I guess it's all right, but I wish we spent more time. And bruv, listen, I'm chuffed for you and Miriam. You'll make a lush truth for your kids to live in. And sorry I never bought a present or sent a card I meant to. The life I lead is seven nights a week flipping heads through. But whatever there's forever shit to get through. Just know how much it is. Know how much it is that I respect you. And listen, it's all for you. It's really all for you. It's all for you, bruv. It's really all for you. It's all for you. It's really all for you. It's all for you, Toby. True. You are giving out some mad love tonight, Disraeli. Thank you so much. And thanks to Safiya and for being an incredible performer. Both of you have blown my mind up. <laughs> and I know that you've delighted the people watching at home as well. So uh, thanks for being part of the Apples and Snakes at home. It's a real privilege to hear and see you. Next week, folks, well, next week, folks, we've got the same quality, the same incredible build. Not the same performers, obviously, because that, that'd be rubbish. But um, we've got Rosie Carrick, we've got Vanessa Kasulu, and Ricky Tart will be hosting it. What a great name. And um, that, that brings to an end, poignantly, 11 years of forked courtesy of apples and snakes. Uh, makes me feel sad but happy that Apples and Snakes continues, poets like this continue. It's an amazing thing that you're doing, 35 years of like bringing incredible spoken word to everyone. Lisa says, fab work everyone. There we go, so you should know. Sessions like this prove that spoken word will not be silenced in these times. We need you more than ever. Thank you, Apples and Snakes. Thank you, poets. And thank you, audience. My name's Mama Tokus. Good night. <laughs>